Boozer was surprised to find that rivals Ken Anderson and Ramey Smith had checked in ahead of him, and he had slipped to fifth place. I had the chance to talk to both of, to both Mackie and, and uh, Jeff at the, at the White Mountain checkpoint, so, so that's cool. At least I wasn't too far behind. He still has a chance to reclaim third place, but whatever the outcome, for Martin Boozer, this race will go down as a win you know reinforcing that father and son bond which is uh, as a parent was a very unique experience Rome came off a 90 miserable wet wet uh, run slushy trail horrible just <laughs> <coughs> just crazy Martin ran the first third of the trail with his son Rome it's fun to have Rowan here but he was also laying back and playing possum for the other racers the wily veteran bolted after the checkpoint in Ruby passing 10 other competitors to catch up with the leaders. But now, it appears he waited too long to spring his trap. I kind of sacrificed some of my personal comfort out here. I'd say that's an understatement. <laughs> Lance Mackey will be turned loose by the judges in just 50 minutes. His strategy, go light and go fast. And I am definitely going as light as possible. Even the bungee cords are too heavy. 99.9% .9 of the time, if you don't have it, it's when you need it. And if I do need it, well, I can suffer for 70 miles. Cold weather gear, runner plastics, extra headlights, batteries, wrist wraps, gloves, tug lines. There's two bags, basically. that kind of experience and, and uh, determination. Um, I'm, I'm nervous, and I will be right until we get to the finish line. How's the kids doing today? Mackey preps his team for a hard run to the finish. He's asking them to dig deep and pull off one more miracle run. 70 miles, and you can be done until this time next year. Jeff King and his team have one final chance to run down Mackey and claim victory. I can do this. If, if he has a bad run and I have a good run, it's still mine to lose. Now everything's got to go my way. He is the guy you have to beat every year. I don't know that you'd consider us best of friends. He's out to get me, and I'm out to get him. He said, I want to beat him badly. Because he is, in my opinion, the best in the world. Hard not to be pleased at this stage, considering all the things that I've went through to, to get him this far. As Lance fuels his team for the final push, he's missing his lead dog and good friend, Hobo. Before the race even began, Hobo and another of Mackey's dogs got into a scrap. And Hobo was injured. Hobo had some puncture wounds up and down his forearm. His wounds were not healing, and his head was not in the game. Just in drop here. Dog. Lance was forced to drop Hobo at the Roan checkpoint. Come on, Hobo. Come on, buddy. These are, you know, my babies, and I don't want to see any of them hurt or injured or sick. I'm not going to jeopardize um, their future or their health, you know? I'll take good care of them. I didn't realize how uh, important or a part he was playing until he's been missing. Jeff King's team of dogs is still at full strength. And even though he doesn't have the lead, he may have the advantage. I've got the potential for a really good run. Earlier, there were times I'd make up that kind of time on him in one run. He definitely seems to have something hidden away as far as energy and drawn as in less than 10 minutes, a 77-mile sprint to Nome between two fierce competitors will decide the closest Iditarod race in years. I got cork till and I can leave it. 53. 53. Hey! Ha! Ha! Larry, ha! 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 Before chasing down Mackey, 
Jeff King and his team must wait an agonizing 57 minutes. Come here. Come here. All right. At the White Mountain checkpoint, Jeff King, currently running second, is just minutes away from being turned loose by the judges. Running first and fast, Lance Mackey has turned a 57-minute head start into an eight-mile lead. Hey! And we are not slowing down. <laughs> it isn't gonna affect my team to worry about what Jeff or whoever else is doing. Unless I worry about them, it will affect my team. Oh, oh, all right. I know he's back there. I can sense the, the presence. A few minutes under an hour, because that's a big lead for this guy. Well, I have made up two and a half hours on people from White Mountain to Nome. Hey! Hey! Oh, hey! Good boy, Deets! Oh. At exactly 5.50 p.m., Jeff King leaves White Mountain. 77 miles away, the finish line. A burled arch in Nome, Alaska. In a few hours, hundreds of fans will line the streets, waiting to greet the heroes who rose to the challenge of racing 1,049 grueling miles through Alaska's unforgiving outback. John Rowe pulls into White Mountain in 15th place. Welcome to White Mountain, Dee Dee. Thank you. Hi, Dee Dee. Bye. She'll rest eight hours before heading to Nome, but her race is no longer about winning. I'll race depending on who uh, I can get. I won't race if I'm stressing my guys out. But if they're having a good time, then we'll race them in. Finishing strong, not finishing stressed. She worries about her team more than she does herself. Running the toughest race in the world is a choice for Dee Dee, one she doesn't regret. Being on the Iditarod Trail is worth taking a risk with my immune system, if that's what it is. I don't want to live safe. I'm interested in living full. Thank you. A bad day on the Iditarod Trail is better than a good day at home. For to get some good sleep. I'm really quite, quite sleepy. As Dee Dee and her dogs settle in, Martin and his team are ready to run. 77 hard miles to the finish. As Martin heads out, he's facing a three-way battle for third place. Racers Ken Anderson and Ramey Smith are only minutes ahead. 46 miles behind the leaders, diabetic Bruce Linton is giving his dogs a well-deserved break in Elam. Are you going to make it to Nome, huh, Jakey? Yeah, I had to drop down the dog last checkpoint, so down, down to 10. My man Shakespeare has a hurt toe. Dropping his dogs and coping with his own health is turning Bruce's race into an emotional roller coaster. It's a little low. I mean, it's good if you're not running dogs in the middle of the night, but it's not good if you're not in the middle of the night. Sick of being sick, and the dogs are sick. I felt several times about scratching, but they always say if you got into a checkpoint and you had a terrible run and you're tired and you're miserable, never ever scratch before you go lie down and get a little sleep. So Bruce puts his dogs and himself down before making any drastic decisions. Babying my dogs. Meanwhile, at the last checkpoint in safety, Lance Mackey is still holding on to first place. Safety is just a quick pit stop for Mackey. He signs in and heads out. Hi. 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 